All right, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So let's get straight into this video. I wanna talk about the war between the flesh and the spirit. And this is something that I've been inspired to talk about. <clears throat> but um, as the Bible says, the flesh and the spirit are constantly at war. And this is this is the type of war that we fight. And even if, if you're watching this video or just in general, even if you don't believe in God, like it's clear as day that people constantly are dealing with their flesh right and all of its fleshly desires and all the desires that you have that make you regret it after right this is all the flesh ever does whenever you whenever you succumb to the flesh not only do you regret it but also then it becomes stronger then it becomes even hungrier right so say if we succumb to our lust you know we we, we fall into sexual immorality we succumb to our lust because we view it as in like oh if i succumb to it it's going to satisfy my you know passion or whatever it's gonna satisfy me, but that's not even what happens. So whenever you do end up honoring that fleshly desire, it gets hunger after like, yeah, you might be satisfied sexually for like an hour after. And then you start to realize that you start to have even more urges and more lust. And you're like, wait, what? And this goes, this goes with like everything with the flesh. So even in things like eating, like if you fast for a certain amount of time, at first you're gonna be like starving. At first you're gonna be starving, your flesh is gonna be screaming at you. But after a while, it's almost like the opposite happens. You go from starving and then even though you've been, say you've been fasting like 24 hours, right? And in the first 16 hours, you might be starving. Then after like 16 hours, you still haven't ate anything. Then randomly, like you're not as hungry. You're like, wait, I don't really need as much food. That's how the flesh and the spirit work, right? The flesh works by, it gets stronger by you feeding it while the spirit also gets stronger by you feeding it. And the flesh deceives us all the time. We think we think if we succumb to these desires, <clears throat> whether it's our hunger, you know, gluttony, our lust, our greed, whatever it is, right? We think it's gonna satisfy it, right? Because the fl the flesh is is like a it's it's like a constant nuisance, right? Like in my opinion, I wish I could just tear my flesh off and just hang it on the the coat hanger, right, and let it collect dust, but. That's not the truth, right? We have to we have to crucify our flesh. We have to carry it, but we have to crucify it. That's what God does. But and the battle could get really could get really frustrating, right? Because we want to we want to do what's good. We want to do what's good, but then we have the constant nagging from the flesh and all of its annoying desires, right? But we want to do the right thing. There is a Bible verse. <clears throat> It's just paraphrasing when I can't remember the exact Bible verse, but it says, I want to do what's right. No, it's what I hate, I do, and what I do, I hate, or something like that. If, if anyone knows that Bible verse, because it might be wrong, it might be a wrong <clears throat> paraphrase. But if you know it, just like put it down in the comment. But that's how it is with the flesh. It's like you want to you wanna do the right thing. You want to not succumb. You want to you wanna feed your spirit, but yet you do the wrong thing. And then you regret it, right? Then you're like, oh, I'm going to... I'm not gonna do this again, but the thing with the flesh is it gets stronger any, every time you feed it, right? It's like a constant fire. And whenever you deprive it, then it starts to get weaker. While we think when we deprive our our flesh, we think it's gonna uh we think it's gonna get even stronger the more we deprive it, right? So we think, oh, if we don't if we don't succumb to this temptation or like this hunger or whatever it is, it's it's only gonna keep getting stronger and stronger. But it only does that in the beginning stages when it's dying, right? So whenever whenever something dies, it's gonna scream the loudest. You guys ever heard that? Whenever something whenever something is about to die, it's gonna yell out the loudest. That's how the flesh is. So whenever you're starting to live in the spirit, your flesh is gonna scream at you at first. You're gonna be like, I can't take these these temptations and these uh, these feelings and these desires, right? But it's only a short amount of time, and that's what I've noticed. Once a certain amount of time passes, when you don't gratify these desires, they start to fade. You start to forget about them, right? You start to feel more free. And the Bible also says we're either slaves to sin or slaves to Christ, right? Slaves to God. But the thing, being being a slave to sin, you're, you're a literal slave, right? Like you have desires nagging at you 24-7, right? You have to fulfill these nagging desires. Well, when you're a slave to Christ, you're actually free because you're free from these. You don't succumb to them, so you can walk around freely. But uh, I, I really wanted to talk about the flesh because this is something that like every single person deals with. This is something that I've I've dealt with plenty of times. I mean, throughout not just plenty of times. I mean, I deal with it all the time. Like the 
the desires of the flesh are always going to be there, but we know we know who's stronger than our flesh, right? Give me a second here. This is not staying straight. Okay. Should be. But yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, this um. Whenever we. Whenever we say, oh, you know, you have an urge, especially for if you're someone who has quote unquote ADHD, I have ADHD as well. And the reason I'm putting quotation marks is because I'm not sure if it's true or not. It probably exists. It probably does. I believe it's just kind of like a kind of like a weakness and a strength at the same time. But what I mean, a weakness is I, I believe that ADHD because of your constant need for dopamine, because that's been my struggle throughout my whole life. It's always like the dopamine. It's so, I don't know what it is, but it's like the constant itch. I believe the weakness of ADHD is just your flesh is weaker, right? You just have a weaker flesh in general. But God says my grace is sufficient in weakness. So whenever you are weak, that's when Christ is the strongest. So it's, it's good to glorify God whenever you're in these weak, weak situations, whenever you feel like you can't bear these temptations and these this need for dopamine and everything that's a good time to glorify god because that's when god's grace shines the hardest on you right that's when that's when you see the goodness of god so even in your even if you fail or if you succumb or if you don't overcome these things right you see his grace you see how how good he really is you see how his desire for you is to to help you and strengthen you and save you not to condemn you or anything because a lot of people think oh they they talk they talk about hell as in like a way to like condemn people right they're like if you do this you're gonna go to hell and that's not the case jesus came down to save people from that right from destruction from destroying themselves and from perishing from getting completely destroyed right he doesn't want that for you so jesus came down and died on the cross so we could live truly like live abundantly right so we could actually live so we don't live like ghouls so Anytime I've ever dealt with my my flesh, especially if I'm succumbing and succumbing and failing and failing and failing, I feel like some ghoul or something, like some goblin in like the basement. I'm just like, wait, what am I even doing, right? Like you keep feeding it and it just gets hungrier and hungrier. You have no satisfaction. It's like, no, the more you feed it, the less satisfaction you have. At first you had desires and then you fed that desire. Then all of a sudden you have stronger desires and then you fed that those stronger desires and all of a sudden the desire is even stronger and then you start feeling less fulfilled and less. It's like an addiction, you know? That's how the flesh is. It's like you, first you take that little dose and it works, but then the next time you need double the dose and then, and then you need triple the dose to get the same effect. Up until it gets to a point where you need a hundred times the dose you first took and then that, that hundred times dose like still doesn't get the job done right that's all the flesh does you're constantly just running and chasing and running and chasing and going in circles and just doing nothing right you're just constantly like a slave it like dangles above your head you're just a slave right you keep following after these flesh desires and you're going nowhere you just keep hurting yourself right but uh i want to go back to speaking about lust yeah speak lust is because you know, God made sex, of course, but lust is also like more of a perverted. It's a perverted thing. The enemy has perverted what God used for good for evil, right? That's all the enemy does. So, and sexual immorality is the only sin that we where we sin against our own body. So it means we hurt our own body. It's like we, when we're sexually immoral, it's like we kind of like forsake our own body in a way, if that makes sense. It's like you, it's like you tell your own body, like, you know what, like I'm gonna leave you, right? It's like it's almost like you tell your, it's like you're telling your body, like I don't care for you, pretty much. That's why it's a sin against your own body. It's like you're, you're, you're just destroying your own body deliberately. That's how it is. Whenever you're socially, sexually immoral, so and lust is just as the same as every other flesh but the thing with lust though is jesus said to run away from lust that's the only one that you can't you can't overcome by sheer just like will you you can't overcome by sheer just like you can't you can't lust like be in lust and then like avoid it as soon as you get in into it right like if you're a man and you're lusting after a woman too much as soon as you started that lust already it's going to be like a burning fire right it's 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 going to be even harder for you to look away this is why before you even feel it you just look away you have to do it because if you don't that's what's going to open you up to lust right and 
whenever you lust against someone like say you know you're a guy and you find a woman super sexually attractive but to the point where you start to lust after her that's when you open yourself up to her and that's how you get manipulated right when you open yourself up to this woman and she can see that you're lusting after her she's gonna she's gonna get a power trip about it right she's gonna she's pretty much gonna use and abuse you at that point right she's gonna make herself feel powerful she's gonna manipulate you and i believe that this also happens because since lust is a sin as well these situations are for our own good because it shows us not to lust right because it's it's a sin it shows us what lust does lust makes us ignorant it makes us stupid right it makes us do dumb things it makes us open to manipulation it makes us open to evil right that's why whenever that's why whenever you lust it's as if your brain turns off and even say the same thing with if you're a woman right you find a guy that's super sexually attractive but it's to the point where you start to lust instead of just thinking the guy's nor like normally sexually attractive because it's normal to think someone's sexually attractive but it's to the point of lust then you open yourself up to manipulation right it's he'll get you at that point he's gonna be like oh, okay this woman's like i got her completely under my control just as if the man did the same to woman she's gonna be like i got this guy under my control right this is why it's important to not lust because it doesn't do anything good it only destroys it only manipulates it only hurts it only <clears throat> it only tires out it only causes more sin it only causes more problems more darkness and everything so sin is serious guys sin is growing up in growing up in god is truly seeing like how dangerous sin is like sin is no joke these these flesh desires are no joke right like we need to crucify them like they don't help us whatsoever they open us up to evil right they open us up to getting hurt getting manipulated just hurting ourselves whether that's like our own bodily desires to hurting other people through manipulations and everything through lying through cheating through especially speaking of cheating lust is what causes cheating for the majority the most of the time right that's what causes couples to separate because of lust this is how strong lust is and this is why the only way you can overcome it is to run away from it that's why jesus says flee from sexual immorality he literally says flee so it's like hey i'm out of here like i'm i'm not doing this as soon as you feel some lust you're like oh no, 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 no there's no way but you could be like okay i find her sexually attractive but once you're at the point of lust it's like no you can't do it you're gonna get hurt like it's it's gonna happen right so but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you like the video of course don't forget to like don't forget to comment anything below if you want to comment and also if you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to subscribe go ahead and hit that subscribe button all right god bless you guys and i'll see you in the next video